right, so I just want to say that I have been extremely excited to review this product. I ordered it months ago, and I just want to stress that I absolutely never back Kickstarters or crowdfunded products. This is honestly the first one that I've ever backed. I saw the first trailer and I was instantly sold. But here we are, after about four to five months of waiting, I finally have my hands on the Funky S. And it is just another emulator box, but I mean, look at how small it is. That's literally it. This thing is absolutely small as hell. But I think that's worth talking about. Is this as small as gaming can get? Well, let's find out. So the Funky S is a tiny foldable emulation device. When I say tiny, I mean unbelievably tiny. The key in Funky literally means it fits on your keychain and as an homage to that original mission, it comes keychain attached so you can hook it right onto your keys from the get-go. And yeah, I mean it does. The, the, the D-pad is the size of your thumbnail. I seriously can't stress how small this is compared to a Game Boy Advance SP, which is this is clearly modeled after and is, I think, generally heralded as the smallest, best way to play Game Boy Advance games, where the micro maybe suffered a bit and the original Game Boy Advance was less pocketable. It's open source and open hardware, and this is really a tinkerer's dream. But is it worth tinkering with? Well, the specs, I'm going to list them on the screen. You have an ARM Cortex-A7 at 1.2 GHz, 64 MB of DDR2 RAM. You get 32 GB on the system. You can replace that with an SD micro SD card. Your screen is 1.5 inches at 50 Hz. You get a mono speaker, a very small 410 milliamp hour battery, and a micro USB port for charging and loading up new games. Basically, what this translates to is you can emulate pretty much anything up to the PS1 with no problems. You can load your, like I said, this is open source, open whatever. You can load other emulators beyond that. There is some N64 stuff that has been shown on YouTube to work, but with the 13 emulators included, we get up to PS1 and everything works swimmingly. In fact, on their website, they kind of emphasize of the 13 emulators, there's about a 97% compatibility across the board. And yeah, that means that Metal Gear Solid is going to be running on this 1.5 inch display just as Kojima intended people to experience this cinematic masterpiece. So in terms of design, it feels very clearly referencing the Game Boy Advance SP. The buttons are satisfyingly clicky, and you even get some replacement buttons. If you're not happy with the default buttons, you can swap them out. That is kind of a nice little perk. And honestly, if anything, encourages you to crack open the device. One complaint on the buttons is the bumpers are kind of a bit awkward to hit. You have to have your fingers in the exact right position to really give the right amount of force to click those in, but uh, not too bad considering how small these buttons really are. The screen is shockingly bright. It's crisp and responsive. I didn't notice any sort of latency on the screen, and I was really surprised at how readable this thing was. Honestly, I can't stress how small this thing is. It's super small, and I could read things just fine. Would I play a 60 hour JRPG on this? Absolutely not, but it is much clearer and much more responsive than I thought. The fact that I wouldn't play a 60 hour JRPG is not due to the clearness of the screen so much as the size of the text. What I really think shines here though is the software. There are, like I said, 13 emulators built in on day one when you get your device, but like I said, you can obviously add whatever else you want, tinker around, do whatever you want, and you even get some built-in games, some freeware stuff for some of those systems. But like I said, the software is what really shines beyond the emulators. There's actually a lot going on here, and it's all really snappy and really responsive. Stuff like screenshots that you wouldn't expect on this 
two inch device and save states. And games generally run great. I mean, this thing is really a tinkerer's dream. You get to get into the emulation space, you can learn the basics, and if you're brave enough, you can even dive into the GitHub repos or the hardware files. But in conclusion, I would just like to say that the Funky S is a really, really, really cool product. For 1.0, I really can't ask for much more. If you are at all interested in this, I would recommend buying it and you know what you're getting into and I think you will be happy with the results. However, if Funky S is watching this video and they were to consider a 2.0, I do have some enhancements that I think would maybe benefit the product and I'll explain why. I understand a lot of this is probably, well obviously due to size, possibly due to battery life. So if they could add Bluetooth, this could open up the door for controller support and then you just wouldn't have to use these tiny ass buttons. Yes, it would. The, the, the tiniest buttons could become a last resort instead of a mandate. And especially those buttons were to wear out, break, whatever. It would be nice. Next up with the Bluetooth, you would get the ability to use Bluetooth headphones. Not complaining about the mono speaker considering the size of the device, but there is no headphone jack on this. So if you want sound, you're gonna have to get it out loud. Next up would be an HDMI micro, and I think this would be absolutely huge. If you could put an HDMI micro port in a device of this size, and you could combine it with Bluetooth, you would have the absolute ultimate portable retro console. Honestly, I think Funky should consider making a screenless version that has just this, so that you could have this like, with their, so their software is really good. You could have on your keychain a full operating system with all of the classic games that you need with an HDMI hookup on it and Bluetooth support, you would have the ultimate portable retro console. And just for, you know, keeping things modern, I would recommend USB-C. They justify why they don't have USB-C. I totally respect it. Again, the product is outstanding. This is just for a 2.0. 60 hertz screen. I like I said, I really do not see an issue with the screen right now, but yeah, 60 hertz can't hurt. And last but not least, on the software side, is a rewind feature, which I was not able to find. Put it in the comments if you are aware of it. But like I said, I'm still impressed that something like this has save states at all. So yeah, Funky S, it is smaller than you can actually believe, and it can hold all of your retro games up through the PS1 era. If you want Funky S content, please let me know. I am excited and enthralled and happy to provide it. That's all for me. Catch you next time.